everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland, the place to get the inside scoop on Icelandic nature, history, culture, and language. My name is Jules, and I have a very special guest with me today, Ari Trosti Gudmundsson, who is very well known here in Iceland as a geologist, documentarian, broadcaster, member of parliament, amongst many other things. <laughs> That's just like the tip of the iceberg of how awesome and multi-talented you are. And so welcome, and thank you for being thank on the you. show. Thank you. And as you're putting on mainly your geologist hat today, uh, you're quite well known here for that too as being an expert geologist. And there's so many questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've got a list here of the questions that people have sent Let's in. Let's see what we can... Yes. <laughs> but before we jump into any questions from mm -hmm. everybody else, mm -hmm. I think it would be great to give just an overview of what is happening right now. So what are the possible scenarios and what is some of the predictions based off of the seismic data? Well, uh, it's quite simple, you know, one half of Iceland lies on a plate, big plate that's moving and the other half on the other plate. And, and this sort of uh, uh, boundary, is it, it's set with what we call volcanic systems. Mm -hmm. And four of them line uh, this peninsula of Reykjanes sky where the international airport is. And there are four of them there, and two of them have been active now for uh, almost two years. And currently, <clears throat> there is uh, a part of one of the volcanic systems collecting magma. Okay. Uh, it's pushing its way into the crust. There are a lot of earthquakes, some of them uh, size five, which is considerable. And then now uh, the magma is very close to the uh, surface along a fissure that's about two to three kilometers long. Um, and this fissure is about one, one and a half meters wide, mm -hmm. and it's filled with magma. Yeah. And it's only about one to two kilometers below the surface. So okay. we are now, because it's still pushing, we are now expecting a volcanic eruption any, any day, sort of. And there is continuous earthquake uh, activity going along with this uh, about 35,000 earthquakes that have been registered for uh, the last two weeks. Yeah. That's what's happened. Okay, so that is also, I think, one of the things is possible eruption. And you're saying that the more and more the things are, the magma is gathering. And it was, it seems that it's moved though. So I think that's kind of been interesting too. It's like mm -hmm. at one point there was the gathering of magma seemingly in one area and then it moved a little bit. Yeah, well last year, uh, late last year, the, this magma gathering was uh, close to the town of Grindavik, mm -hmm. where the Blue Lagoon is, uh, and the magma wasn't able to surface, so it, 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 it uh, uh, started to solidify within the crust without surfacing, so that's good. Yeah. Now the activity has moved uh, further to the northeast, and the situation there is somewhat different, so now we uh, think that we will see an eruption soon. Okay. But you have to notice that this is, a, this is a, a common phenomenon in Iceland, because we have a volcanic eruption every three to four years on the average. So th this is nothing unnormal, this is quite normal. Yeah. We just okay. have to deal with it somehow. Yeah, that is very true. And in terms of the lava flow, so I'm just going to jump into the questions that people have. So thank you to everybody who sent in the questions. We're going to try to get through as many as possible. <laughs> and so how is the lava flow direction predicted and how accurate are these predictions? We think, and that's almost, uh, if, if there is a, a volcanic eruption, it comes out of that particular uh, dike, as we call it. We call the, uh, the, the magma filled fissure, we call it a dike. Mm -hmm. And if it ruptures the uh, the, uh, the surface, <coughs> lava will uh, form what we call magma fountains, okay. which can be 50 meters high, even higher. And then it splashes down and, and starts to move. And this type of basaltic magma, it's it's quite uh, viscous, so so it's rather thick, mm -hmm. slow moving yeah. mass. And it would probably come out of the uh, southern end of this fissure and it will move towards the sea, mm. uh, which is, uh, uh, I would say, about 10 kilometers away. We have a, a road called Suðurstrandavegur, which is the connection between the, uh, the airport and Keflavik in south of Iceland. Um, and this lava flow could uh, cross or damage that uh, particular road. But uh, there is no imminent danger to any settlements. Mm. Uh, 
um, uh, the lava will not flow uh, direction north, which is then towards uh, the main road between uh, Reykjavik and, and Keflavik mm -hmm. International Airport. Uh, we would then probably have a situation like that if later on, if this fissure uh, gets to be longer mm -hmm. or later in this episode which we don't know how many years is going to last right. because in, in in the old olden times we had episodes of this kind that lasted uh, 20 30 years right, wow. with uh, eruptions coming and going but anyway uh, we think uh, that uh, in this case the eruption would be rather small okay. short-lived uh, the lava flow would just uh, uh, be confined uh, in this uh, rather low-lying area between two mountains. So, uh, uh, if it uh, commences as we think, uh, this would be probably one of the best spots on the whole peninsula to have an eruption. Okay. And what about gas release? When magma comes out of a volcanic fissure, it's associated with gases, but not one type, but many types. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the most common type is simply water vapor. Okay. Uh, but there are other more nasty gases. Uh, and that's um, uh, depending on the type of magma and the intensity okay. uh, of, the, uh, of the outflow, uh, whether this is going to be a problem because it disperses very quickly. So we think gas uh, contamination will not be a problem uh, uh, if the eruption uh, is like we hope it will be. Uh, the production of uh, what we call airborne eruptives, you know, mm. pumice or, or, or ash, yeah. it's very limited because uh, the main ingredients are simply uh, lava, yeah. which flows, uh, doesn't fly. Some flying material will be emitted, but that's confined to a very uh, uh, small area around the, the, the winds. So it won't be a problem, for example, like uh, to the international flight uh, <laughs> air traffic, it won't be. It, it doesn't tend. But because my, my initial thought was, even if it isn't as explosive as a in 2010, Bala de Bunka, in 2014, mm. 2015, mm. 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 that was more, you know, of an impact here in Iceland, meeting the gases. So I think that's where that kind of question comes yeah. from. Yeah, well, but that was a completely different scale. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. Bala de Bunka eruption was 10, 20 times more intensive as we hope this will be. Right. So well, that's a completely different story. And uh, the AF of the Yoko eruption has, it was both the magma type mm. and the uh, access of water. Okay. Because it's a glaciated volcano. So uh, uh, in, in, in Reykjanes, uh, the sea is quite far away. Uh, and I mean, lava flowing into sea does not produce any uh, sustainable amount of, uh, of, uh, of uh, ash or, or, or flying eruptives. So uh, in general, we don't expect uh, uh, ash or, or pumice being produced in any quantities to be worried about. Okay. So basically just some lava flow and maybe a little bit of water vapor, or probably a lot of water vapor and some yeah, and, gas. And then, and then the, the, the sulfur and the, the carbon yeah. and all that stuff. But it disperses very quickly, as I say, and, uh, and it's monitored. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and we, we forecast the, uh, the, the gas spreading according to the amount coming up, uh, according to the, the, the prevailing winds and things. So uh, uh, this is something we can deal with uh, and, and we, we, we can absolutely not compare this with uh, Holurun, <laughs> which was the largest eruption in Iceland since the 18th century. Yeah, very much different mm -hmm. in terms of impact for sure. Mm -hmm. And in terms of measurement, what type of equipment is being used in order to figure out this specific volcanic eruption, if it happens, of course, is going to be less of a like huge one or cause less gases? Like, how does that? Well, we, we have uh, we have different uh, types of, of equipment. Uh, we have uh, GPS antennas. That they are measuring mm, in real time the movement of the crust up or down okay. or sideways. We have the seismometers, which are uh, recording down to the smallest tremors as well as the big ones. 
we have uh, satellite uh, pictures, for example, from radar satellites, mm -hmm. allowing us to uh, uh, record how fast the, uh, the, the spreading is ongoing. Uh, we have model, uh, uh, models to calculate the amount of magma coming from above, mm. from, uh, sorry, from, from, from below into the, into the fissure. Uh, so we can say, okay, it's, it's let's say, four or five times the amount of uh, the little river that's flowing into Reykjavik, Erledor. So that would be 20, 30 cubic meters per second of magma okay. entering the fissure right. from, from, from below. Um, and this is all calculated uh, through uh, uh, data that he can collect uh, with all this uh, different equipment. Okay. Uh, this is the same uh, methods we used in Holotrain. Okay. Um, there is nothing particularly new right now that we can use, but it's uh, very accurate in that sense that you can follow the development. You can even make a forecast. Okay. Uh, but now we have to remember that uh, the magma is so close to the surface uh, as we speak that uh, probably we would not have uh, noticed more than one hour okay. or less. So uh, that's why we have also closed the area. Right. Yeah. And uh, later on, if uh, lava is approaching uh, um, some kind of man made structures or something, we could start to either to build walls out of uh, material uh, which is uh, uh, located where, where we are mm -hmm. right then uh, or we can try to use the method we used in the West Malaya uh, eruption in 1973 mm -hmm. when we tried to slow down and successfully uh, were able to slow down the lava flow okay. by pumping uh, lots and lots of seawater onto the, uh, onto the uh, lava flow but this is costly, this is complicated, so uh, usually we, we don't try to, to, to divert lava flow, so right. we just let them flow. Okay. But uh, in, in all in all, uh, uh, we are not expecting any, any, any big problems to begin with, at least. Okay. And one person asked about interferograms. Is that something that is used yes. to measure? Yes, okay. that is something we, uh, we use with the, with the satellites because they, they are rated pictures mm -hmm. where you can compare one picture uh, after another and thereby you can, uh, you can assess uh, the, uh, the movement, the, 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 the horizontal movement, uh, and we call them interferograms, yes. And if an eruption doesn't happen at this location, do you think it would potentially happen somewhere else? Or is it just right now well, isolated well, to here? Well, now we are in very, very uh, difficult... Uh, uh, Theoretical. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> difficult corners of science because, uh, um, you know, this uh, spreading of Iceland or divergent movement, it... it, it, it quite often uh, moves uh, from one place to another during a period of uh, a few years okay. or even tens of years. So in uh, 1975 to 1984 we had this kind of an incident in north, northeast Iceland where we uh, had a volcanic uh, uh, system mm -hmm. come alive and there were injections into the crust uh, 21 times. Okay. Wow. Out of those 21 times, nine uh, resulted in small eruptions. Okay. And they were moving. Uh, one fissure, uh, volcanic fissure, opened here. The next one, maybe one year later, uh, further north, and then another further north. <laughs> so it was sort of moving. The activity was moving slowly to the north, and that died out. Right, interesting, okay. This we know has happened in the peninsula here uh, three times uh, in the medieval time period, in the 11th century, okay. the 12th century, and the 13th century. And each time there was a different volcanic system active. Okay. And each time this uh, uh, period of unrest 
lasted 20 to 30 years. Wow. Okay. With so and so many eruptions, we don't know exactly how many, but there were a number of them in each time, mm -hmm. in each period. Uh, we could be heading into this uh, sort of a period of unrest mm. uh, from last year on to this year and then for uh, maybe one or two or three decades onwards and then we don't know yet where the uh, the uh, the uh, the magma will be able to uh, to uh, surface yeah and the idea of all of this is simply when when you are splitting Iceland the earth is mending itself mm. by injecting this molten material yes. from below so uh, we won't have two islands right that's something that i think a lot of people were surprised at when i mentioned it on instagram is that iceland is slowly being pulled apart yeah. but because of volcanic activity it's yeah. filling up the yeah. land in essence well it is about two centimeters each year yeah. uh, the average movement if you take one million years it would be 20 kilometers yeah so, uh, so uh, there is a lot of, of this magma injection activity in ongoing from one year to another somewhere in Iceland. So, uh, Which is necessary uh, and, for and, and the island. 90% <laughs> 90, 90 of the magma or more doesn't yeah. surface. Right. It just uh, solidifies within the crust. Um, uh, and it, the, the, the picture is a little more complicated than I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, it's a simplified thing, but I think But this is the basic yeah. idea. Yeah. And could an eruption, not necessarily this eruption if it's going to be that small, but could it affect electricity and hot water yes. and natural resources? This eruption would not do that, where, yeah. where it's now confined uh, to this one fissure. Yeah. But if we had an eruption somewhere else, mm -hmm. because last year when we had this bout of uh, uh, unrest uh, close to Grindavik, mm -hmm. uh, there was, a, was an injection of magma into the crust. So let's say that magma had surfaced, it would have been probably very close to the Blue Lagoon, where mm. we have the power plant, where we have some of the uh, uh, cold water facilities. Uh, so uh, uh, if we are thinking about the next 5, 10, 20 years of uh, unrest in Reykjanes, then of course uh, we could see roads uh, damaged, we could see this power line that's connecting uh, uh, Hafnafjörður with the rest of the peninsula could be li liable as well. Uh, and of course, some some places where we have people living, uh, not the main towns though. Yeah. Okay. Grindavik could be endangered. It's it's the, uh, the 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 one of the of the few towns we have there that's really uh, built on a lava flow as yeah. well as Hafnafjörður. Uh, Keflavik is uh, much safer, uh, the international airport is much safer. Now we are talking about uh, a, a broad picture, a yeah. uh, long time ahead. Right, of more unrest happening over time. Yes. Okay. And one person had an interesting question that I thought was kind of fascinating is that we heard about these earthquakes happening in like, New Zealand. Is this in any way connected? Yeah. Not that far. Uh, we now have uh, quite a lot of uh, earthquake activity northeast of this fissure mm -hmm. and southwest of this fissure. Closer to uh, Grindavik, we could have uh, earthquakes above four mm -hmm. magnitudes. Uh, in Krisuvik, which is in the north, we could see similarities. And these earthquakes, they are triggered by the, uh, the, the stress uh, being uh, uh, projected okay. from the opening of the fissure to nearby areas. So in that case, uh, uh, we see much more earthquakes associated to uh, simply breaking up the crust yeah. than we, we see earthquakes due to magma movement. And in one case, uh, uh, there is an area further to the north, closer to the, uh, to, to the southern Icelandic lowlands yeah. to Kveragerd and Selfoss, closer to that highland section of Reykjanes Peninsula that could produce earthquakes, they are still stronger yeah. between 6 and 6.5. Right. And that's, I think, another interesting question too is we hear about this swarm of earthquakes, mm -hmm. meaning that an eruption might happen, mm -hmm. whereas like there's a big earthquake. What is the like difference in, in those two, meaning like why does a big earthquake not normally 
result in a volcanic eruption, whereas like these swarms. Do. Well, the, the big earthquakes, most of them are are uh, due to uh, simply rupturing the crust. You okay. know, you you're pulling the crust apart, or you are moving it this way. Yeah. You can either have this movement, or you can have this movement. Okay. And uh, th this the, the strain, the stress built up in the crust b because it's 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 brittle. It's not uh, soft as uh, the rock is deeper down. Okay. Uh, it simply splits and, and produces the quakes, and some of them are small. Okay. Uh, because we register every normal day in Iceland somewhere hundreds of earthquakes every day if we if we count down to the small ones. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, 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 magma moving, especially the deep earthquakes as we call them. 15, 20 kilometers down, they are always an indication of not the simple breaking of crust because of stress, but uh, magma on the move. Mm. And we see them right now in, 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 uh, in this uh, long period of unrest we have had now for two weeks. 1% uh, of the earthquakes, 2% of the earthquakes are these deep ones, okay. which mean, which, which are telling us that there is magma. Uh, ascending from below very yeah. slowly into the fissure or into other fissures nearby. We don't know that really. So uh, uh, earthquakes are of two different kinds. Yeah, okay. That's good to know because I think that is also just from my own perspective. When I hear about this swarm, I'm like, oh, okay. And then I heard of a projection where it was like it could result in magma, you know, coming in, yeah. there being a big earthquake, but not an eruption. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So we have uh, tremors. We call yes. them tremors, okay. and they are always indication of, of magma very close to surfacing, or even an eruption already started. Mm. So we call them gos oro in Iceland, which means eruption tremors or eruption of, uh, unrest. Okay. And they are quite different from the usual uh, uh, earthquakes because they have a very low frequency. So it's uh, it's always just like this. Yeah, okay. Of the, uh, the quick shuddering. So, and people, I think over the weekend there was a tremor that was 20 minutes long or something mm, like that. Two hours. Two yeah. hours, okay, even, yeah. even yeah. more. So, that, so was, <laughs> that was in one case uh, uh, last week when we were really thinking, well, now it's, now it's coming. Right, okay. It didn't. Uh, it was probably uh, the proceeding or squeezing into uh, adjacent uh, uh, bedrock to the side. Okay. Uh, not upwards, but sideways. Yeah. One pretty funny question someone asked is, if an eruption doesn't happen, would you be disappointed? <laughs> no? no? <laughs> uh, well, eruptions are never welcome. Yeah, okay. They, they can be okay because they are far away or in one of the big ice caps and, you know, um, have been nicknamed tourist uh, eruptions. I mm. hate that. I hate that uh, term uh, because it has nothing to uh, to uh, to do with uh, with uh, 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 tourism, really. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, the most numerous people wanting to to see the eruption are. Icelanders? Yes. I've, I've even had a <laughs> one person... Because they like that in, in a way. Yeah. It's, it's always very exciting to, to, to witness an eruption, but uh, you have always to think about the negative side, which right. is the destruction. But of course, uh, volcanic activity has a positive side, which is the geothermal uh, energy we are using. So it's some kind of a love-hate uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Relation between between uh, volcanic activity and, and and people in Iceland, but anyway, uh, uh, I won't be disappointed. Uh, I hope this will uh, simmer down, but I think there is more likely to end up as an eruption than it will be simmering down. Okay, I think that. Even though this particular eruption won't, or at least is predicted that it won't cause any issues with the air quality or evacuations. How do Icelanders deal with, say like in 2015 with Bada the Bunka and there was a lot of air pollution. How do you deal with that? Well, we, we deal with that in first of all, uh, prohibiting people to, to be close to the, to the site. Secondly, if it's starting to contaminate the air to some extent, then 
you try to stay inside and mm. not uh, mm. exert yourself, uh, you know, doing doing the push-ups or or, 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 or or running. It's excuse to stay on the couch. And then, uh, uh, if it's still uh, more, then we have to start to uh, uh, use masks. Mm -hmm. This has never happened okay. uh, in, 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 in as far as I know. Uh, and most of the eruption sites, because Iceland is uh, uh, quite sparsely inhabited, mm -hmm. uh, then we haven't had a pro real problem with that since 1783, mm -hmm. when we had this big uh, Skaftar Eldar or Lucky Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, there was a lot of contamination, resulting in about 50% of all the domestic animals being poisoned or, 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 or starved to death, right. and then uh, about 20% of the people. Right. So, uh, uh, but, but then you have to bear in mind that this uh, fissure eruption was 25 kilometers long. Right. Uh, we are now talking about maybe two kilometers or less. Uh, and uh, the production of magma was about uh, 15 cubic kilometers, which means 15 billion uh, cubic meters. Yeah. And uh, eruption like the one we are expecting might be 0.2. Yeah, 0 .3. so little in comparison. So it's, uh, it's a completely different scenario. And the one lucky, I, what I read, is that it actually affected other parts of Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It affected like people. Africa, like they were like, there were so well, many Well, it was noticed world. like uh, some eruptions we have had recently, like the one in Pinatupo in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It was noticed in China, in America, in Europe. Uh, and these are uh, not super eruptions, but mm. big ones that are uh, noticed uh, in, in many countries. And we are not talking about anything of that sort here. Yeah, there's been a, a kind of idea that a amount of eruptions in Iceland happen on average a certain amount of time. So do you feel like Iceland is overdue? And is there actual an average that geologists well, you, use? You, you cannot think of this like that because both the, uh, the, the, the splitting of Iceland, mm -hmm. when I say two centimeters, then this is an average figure yeah. calculated over a period of, let's say, 10 years or 100 years. Um, and it's locally, it's localized. It happens here in this part of Iceland yeah. today. Three months later, it's over here. Mm -hmm. And six years later, it's somewhere else. So it's localized all the time. It doesn't affect all of Iceland in, in, in one go. And the same is with the, uh, the eruptions. They are, uh, they don't have a, it's lo not like a clock, right. you know, with Hekla erupting every 10 years and this, it, Another volcano every five years, and so nature doesn't uh, nature doesn't uh, behave like that, right. really. So what we are talking about is, I think it's 3.4 years if you take right. one yeah. century, and that's last century. Uh, so we often say is every three or four years we have a volcanic eruption on the average, right. meaning that sometimes 10 years lapse between an eruption <laughs> and Iceland. And another another uh, time we have uh, two in a row right. uh, with a few months in, in between. Yeah. It's so it's not overdue in any 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 way. But what what, what we can say about the Reykjanes Peninsula is that we see uh, a, a cycle mm. which has been ongoing for uh, let's say the past five to eight thousand years in 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 the Reykjanes Peninsula, where we have about on an average uh, period of 800 years mm, okay. between those uh, uh, periods of unrest. It's, it's like with the, with, the, with the fisheries in Iceland, the cod, for example. We cannot, uh, we cannot estimate uh, how many tons we can catch each year, but mm. we can make an educated guess. Right. Because there are so many factors that are uh, affecting nature, whether it's cod or a uh, volcanic eruption but you have always to uh, mm, use average figures, you have to uh, rely on history to some extent, you have to ri rely on the technique yeah. to some extent. So you try to be very cautious, so I have to say one sentence to you now, and it's like this, this what is happening now in, 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 in uh, 
close to Grindavik or close to Faradal Fjall, as the mountain is called, it could simmer down, yeah. it could stop. We have always to add this sentence because <laughs> we never know until the eruption happens okay. or occurs that it's really going that way. What are some popular misconceptions about volcanoes that you've heard that you think make people believe that like every volcano is going to act this certain way? Well, it's 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 uh, the, the 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 chance that uh, almost every volcanic eruption in Iceland in Iceland is going to affect the. Uh, let's say, all the neighboring countries. Yeah. Which or even the whole island. Well, yeah, and even though, and, but, but then you have to also to, to, to add that this has happened. Mm -hmm. You know, we have ha had very powerful eruptions of Hekla right. that have blanketed Iceland, uh, two-thirds of Iceland, with uh, the pumice of this size or this size or this size. So, so uh, uh, that's one thing. Uh, and, of course, um, um, some of the uh, big floods, mm -hmm. they are affecting uh, uh, large parts of the southern coast. Yeah. We, have, we have lost people and so on. But the misconception is uh, simply you have always to, uh, to listen to what's really happening until you can start to be afraid right. if you don't live here. And the, the, the second thing is that uh, some of these, uh, for example, these uh, uh, floods occurring because of volcanic eruption underneath ice mm -hmm. will affect the oceans uh, in that way that we will have a sudden rise in in the Netherlands because of a, a of a of a volcanic flood in Iceland, yeah. a tsunami. But that's uh, that's not happening at all. So uh, there are misconceptions like that, or 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 every volcanic eruption in Iceland is going to disrupt the air traffic, yeah. which is also not true. Right. And have scientists noticed if weather is altered, like in, in that coinciding with what's happening? Is this no. very much connected at all? No. Uh, weather <coughs> is um, mm, generated by these huge systems, low pressure system, high is. So, uh, so uh, a volcanic eruption is usually, usually so small mm. that it cannot affect the weather in any way. But, of course, uh, powerful eruptions like the Lucky event is uh, affecting the climate mm -hmm. for a limited uh, number of years by uh, blanketing uh, uh, part of the, uh, of the uh, uh, energy, mm. the, the warmth coming from, from, from the sun. Uh, so it usually has a cooling effect okay. on climate. And this happened with Pinatubo mm -hmm. in the Philippines. This happened with Lucky Fires in Iceland. And this happens uh, every millennium, a few times, every second century maybe on a world scale. Yeah. Uh, but this is always uh, lasting uh, only a number of years. So okay. it's not affecting the climate in general. Right. But is it the, in the opposite, does the climate affect the activity of volcanoes and... Not really. No. Uh, you can of course say that a colder climate would blanket more of Iceland in ice, mm -hmm. so uh, then we would have more of subglacial eruptions, which produce ash, so in that way, yes, yeah. but um, inducing Right. Eruption, no. Okay. You hit on this a little bit about the fact that, you know, you just kind of have to live with the fact that in Iceland this happens. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel like this has affected your outlook on life and being an Icelander living here under somewhat uncertain circumstances in which you, you know, you never know if a volcano will yeah, erupt and how I, impactful I told, might be? I told, it, I told you for um, talking about the love-hate mm -hmm. relationship. Um, yeah, of course, it affects you in a way. I mean, some people are living dangerously, yeah. like on the Westman Islands or in Grindavik or uh, even in the north and in, in Miva, or yeah. around Miva. So they know that. Uh, they rely on science uh, to, to help them out in case. And That's then, of luck. course, society, <laughs> if something happens, yeah. you have to help each other. Right. Um, but you, you living close to Katla or Hekla, you are not thinking every day about uh, a possible eruption. Uh, and if you, if it, if it happens, you hope for the best. Right. Uh, and uh, mm, you cannot afford to be afraid every day. Right. 
Uh, so you have to go about with uh, what you are doing and you have to uh, rely on science and you have to uh, uh, enjoy life. Yeah. <laughs> That's my really simple. very last question that I ask every guest on my show is what is your favorite Icelandic word or phrase? Word of... Word or phrase. Or phrase. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean uh, my, my favorite word or phrase. That's Icelandic, yeah. What? Or in Icelandic. In Iceland, in, in Icelandic. Well, you know, we have had this uh, competition every year to 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 uh, to to find most beautiful. To find, <laughs> and I'm I'm the author of one of these. Okay, are you? Okay, which one is it? But it was the last one. Uh, but it's not my favorite. Okay. <laughs> uh, my favorite. I haven't thought about it. Could be something related to. Uh, to mountains because I'm a mountaineer, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I would I would uh, I would say uh, um, an unclimbed peak, oh clear in Tintur. Uh, that would be something mm. because then I have a I would have a goal. Yeah, you have something you look forward to. Basically. But the uh, word I was uh, I was translating or I was not translating I was writing an article about. Uh, insurance companies, the big ones, mm -hmm. they are now uh, worried about climate change, and they have been been been, been using the word catastrophic okay. climate change in the future. Okay. Not now. Not now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I translated uh, this word into Icelandic as hamfara hlinu. Hamfara hlinu. It means uh, catastrophic warming. Ah. And now this has been used as a political word Aye, okay. by people that are using this as something that's happening right now. But uh, according to what I was writing, uh, it was not uh, the case. It was uh, if uh, the climate warming accelerates, yeah. it would uh, end in uh, a catastrophic uh, climate change, which is then something that they uh, big insurance companies are very much afraid of. Right. Just probably make them bankrupt anyway. Right. So uh, uh, it's what we are expecting, uh, expecting no, what, what, what we are seeing now is fast warming. Right. But it's still not catastrophic. Right. But this word was still uh, chosen as the word of the year. Nice. Yeah, I didn't know I, I, I <laughs> to use it. You know, you're like, I'm not very happy about it, but at the same time, it's kind of no, cool. So it's not my, it's not my <laughs> it's not your favorite. favorite. <laughs> but thank you so much, Jordi, yeah. for today. It's been a pleasure. And for you sharing your insights, I think a lot of people will get so much from this, just a better understanding at least, if nothing else. And if the eruption does happen, we'll also just be, you know, updating people on that. If, if the eruption starts in Reykjanes, it's very wise to, to, to follow very closely uh, the news mm -hmm. <coughs> and everything that uh, the Civil Defense uh, Authority, Almanavarnes, is producing uh, uh, in order to, to, to sort of encounter or, 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 uh, or deal with, uh, with, with what w will happen. Okay. And still the yeah. same <laughs> sentence, it could simmer down. Right. <laughs> well, thank you very much and we appreciate you, know you sharing your knowledge with us.